Hi guys, today I'm here to do a video that was requested quite a while ago and I've only just got around to filming it so I'm so so sorry but it is finally here, it is my favourite crime thrillers of the year. Now it is a little bit early to be doing favourite reads but um, at the moment I don't really think I'm going to be reading many more crime thrillers that are published this year. A lot of the crime thrillers that I've got that I've kind of got from NetGalley or review copies, they're all crime thrillers that are going to be published in the new year. So I don't really think there's going to be many more that I'm going to read this year that are going to blow me away and make me think this is amazing. I wish I'd included it in my top thrillers of the year. Um, so I'm going to talk you through what I've got down here. Some of these are books I've read, some of them are books I haven't read but I own and that I want to read and that have been kind of said that they're amazing thrillers of the year. And I'm also going to talk about a couple that I haven't got here because I've read them as ebooks rather than reading them as physical copies. So I'll talk you through the ebooks first. Um, the first one I wanted to talk about is probably a book that you have already heard of if you love crime thrillers or you love reading kind of anything that's kind of remotely exciting um, and that is The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins. Um, I have quite a funny story, well it's not a funny story but I have quite a, like a long relationship with this book. I first read it in October 2014 and I just thought it was amazing. I read it and I was like this is going to be a massive bestseller. But nobody else had read it because it was kind of an early review copy that I had and I didn't really have anybody to talk about it with so it kind of just faded into the background and I kind of forgot about it a bit. And then when I was working in the bookshop in January, um, the book came in and I thought oh my god I forgot about this, I have to rave about this, I have to tell everybody they need to read it. And I was kind of telling everybody at work, I was saying you have to sell this book to people, it is amazing. And I just had forgotten how amazing it really was, so I reread it again early this year in January, February time, whenever it was published. And I just re fell in love with the characters, I re fell in love with the story, and it was just such a fantastic crime thriller book. And a lot of people have kind of criticised it and said it's not really worthy of all the hype, it shouldn't be a bestseller, it shouldn't be like topping the charts, but I really really enjoyed it and it basically tells a story of a woman who is a very unreliable narrator we don't really know whether we can trust her because she's an alcoholic she blacks out a lot she kind of has a very um kind of not a very good memory so it's very difficult to know if we should be trusting her as the narrator and it basically tells her story of how she gets on the train every day goes to work and every day the train kind of stops at the same part of the tracks and she looks out onto this kind of garden and this this little house that she sees and she makes up this little world for these two people that live there and she calls them Jess and James and she kind of has this idea about what they do for a job, she makes up kind of what their relationship's like and that kind of really struck a chord with me because when I used to commute every day to work I'd get on the train and I'd always look out the window and see different houses and think about the people that were living there. So that's a very nice relatable beginning and you kind of get to know the protagonist and think yeah okay she might be talking quite a lot of sense here but then one day she is on the way to work and she sees Jess kissing a man that's not James and almost instantly Rachel who's the main character thinks oh my goodness you know what's happened what's this change in their story um, and then a couple of days later Rachel sees that Jess has gone missing and all of a sudden Rachel thinks that she holds the key to what happened because she is the probably the only person that saw Jess kissing this other man and she thinks she holds the key to what happened. So she tries to go to the police, she tries to get people to listen to her but obviously because she's very unreliable um, as a person, you know, because she drinks, she blacks out and all this kind of stuff, the police don't really believe her and it kind of threads in with another kind of part of her life, her ex-husband and her new and his new partner and their new child and it kind of interlocks into this very gripping and exciting tale and I don't want to say too much more because I don't want to ruin it but it is just such a fantastic book and I really really recommend you read it if you haven't already but I imagine that if you're a big crime thriller fan you would have read it because it's been the one that people have raved about the most this year. And the second book I wanted to talk about again is a book that has been recommended kind of non-stop um, and it's called I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. Um, it won the Rich and Judy Club I think and it also was like a loose woman book pick. Um, so it's been on quite a lot of, there's been a lot of PR around it and a lot of people talking about it so you've probably read it as well but that was a really fantastic one I read too. That tells a story of a mother whose son gets killed and she kind of runs away to start off a new life because she just wants to leave everything behind but then her old life catches up with her and she kind of tries to find out what happened to her son and why he was killed and all this kind of stuff and it comes to a really really epic and lovely conclusion so definitely worth checking out that one. Um, a few of the others that I've read that have been 
um, ebooks have been Angela Marson's series of books. They are called, let me see if I can get this right, Silent Scream, Evil Games and Lost Girls. And they are ebooks at the moment. I think you can get those paperbacks. I, yeah, I'm sure you can get those paperbacks, um, but I recommend ebooks. And they are a set of books following the same detective um, over the course of the three different novels and a different case in each novel. And the detective is called Kim Stone and she is just the most incredible kind of protagonist I've ever come across in a long time she's the best female detective since Case got better she is just incredible um so they're definitely worth checking out I'll leave a I'll leave a link in the description box below to all of these ebooks I've talked about um because they're definitely worth checking out I don't want to go to too much detail into the Angela Marsons ones because a lot of them kind of the more you say the more you spoil it so I'll leave those in the description box you can go and check them out anyway um so they're the kind of ones I wanted to talk about that I've read as ebooks oh and there's one more um called Burnt Paper Sky by Gillian McMillan, which I do have a physical copy of, but I think my mum's borrowed it at the moment, so I don't actually have it to show you. But um, this is what, I'm gonna talk about this in a bit more detail in a minute, but it's kind of what I would call a mummy thriller. There's quite a lot of those going around at the moment. Um, is this idea of a child going missing, or a child dying, or a child being kidnapped. And a lot of the time, the story focuses around the mum or the parents trying to find the child. And that's why I've kind of dubbed them the mummy thrillers, because they're all about a child and the search to find the child. And they seem to be quite popular at the moment, there's a lot of those floating around. Um, a lot of them kind of feel a bit samey, but Burnt Paper Sky was a really fantastic one. That tells the story of a woman who has broken up with her husband and their son is still quite young. I think he's about eight years old, I think I'm right in thinking. And they are going for a walk, it's kind of late autumn, early winter, and she's kind of feeling guilty because she wants her son to have a really good life, but she's kind of feeling guilty that she's maybe made or put that in what's the word had like a detrimental effect by splitting up with her husband she's worried that she's going to affect her child in that way so she kind of wants to give him a bit more freedom make him feel like he's got a really awesome life so when he, um they're going for a walk in the evening walking this dog or walking their dog the son says mom please can i run ahead can i go to the rope swing and she's kind of reluctant to say yes because it's still a little way to go she won't be able to see him all of the time because he kind of goes around corners and things but she says to him yeah okay because she feels guilty for everything that she's kind of done so he runs ahead and when she gets to the rope swing he's not there she can't find him the child's gone missing and then what ensues is a story about trying to find out what happened to this child are they going to get him back is he been killed and all this stuff and it is a really really lovely book um well lovely is the wrong word but it's a really well written book um that kind of talks through different mediums so you've got the narrative and then there's kind of newspaper reports and interviews and things like that so it's really definitely worth checking out again i'll leave a link to all of these in the description box below so you can check them out now i'm going to move on to the um books i actually have physical copies of which is always a good start um i've only read two of these that i'm going to oh no I've, re I've read three of these i'm going to show you the rest of them are books that i've picked up this year but haven't read yet so the first one that I've read that I loved um, is In a Dark Dark Wood by Ruth Ware. This is the proof copy of it, so the cover is quite st like stark difference um, in the um, actual cover. But this one is a very interesting narrative, and one I really, really enjoyed this, but some people haven't. Um, but I loved it, and it basically tells the story of a woman who um, gets a, an email from a friend that she hasn't heard of from in years saying oh you come to my hen party i'm getting married um and she's a bit confused because they haven't spoken in years she's kind of confused why she would be invited but another one of her friends gets invited and they make this pact they say okay we'll endure it together we'll drive up together and then we'll come home together we just have to kind of show our faces and say that we're you know happy for her so they decide to go to this hen do and it turns out that it's in this really odd house in the woods and it's a house that's very it's made of glass almost there's kind of every wall is see-through downstairs kind of you can see into the kitchen there's glass kind of all the way around so it's almost like a stage in the middle of this kind of wood and um, it's winter time there's lots of mud snow ice it's very kind of it sets the scene really well it's a very gruesome kind of scary place to be um, and it basically tells a story of what happens on this hen do and it becomes very kind of very tense very quickly there's a lot of tension between the characters there's a lot of kind of past histories that are being dug up um it's just very intense and quite claustrophobic actually in terms of the, the storytelling because it's all set in the same house and these characters are very kind of just oh it's just very very good um 
I don't want to say too much more because otherwise I'm going to ruin it but the tagline is someone's getting married someone's getting murdered so you can tell what's going to happen by that tagline um this came out in July this year I think it's still only in hardback um there's an ebook as well but I'll see I don't know if the paperback's coming out probably next year but yeah definitely definitely one to read if you like a good thriller the next one I read this year this one is more kind of I'd say this is more of a crime than a thriller I suppose um this was one that I read when I was working at Waterstone still. Um, it was one of our kind of hot picks, if that's what you want to call it. It was one that we were trying to get people to buy because it was really good. And it is called After the Crash by Michael Bussey. Or Bussey, I'm not quite sure how you say it. Um, and this is um, a book that's been translated from French. And I have to admit, I'm not very good when it comes to translated novels because a lot of the time translated novels tend to have a lot of information and kind of... Um, the story depends on a lot of kind of the culture of that country and a lot of kind of the history and a lot of that and I'm not very good when it comes to other countries my knowledge of France is zero to nine I've never been to France I've never kind of researched anything about it so I was kind of worried that I wouldn't know what was going on or there would be books bits of the book that I just couldn't quite understand but actually I was nicely surprised I could understand it all if there were a few references to French culture it wasn't detrimental to the plot I still understood what was going on um, and the basic premise of this one is it, a plane crash happens and there is only one sole survivor of the plane crash and it is a baby. And this baby um, is basic, like, this is, the book is set in the 1980, 1980, and this is before DNA testing was kind of widely available or had really been discovered. And basically there's this one baby that has survived, but there was two, there were two babies on the flight and both of the ba parents of the babies died. So the only people that know about or kind of can look after this baby are the two families of the two babies and they're both kind of fighting because they're like no this is our family's baby no this is our family's baby because they didn't really you know they don't know what babies look very similar and especially when they're the same gender and they are kind of the families haven't really seen the baby since it was born it's very difficult to kind of tell the difference between the babies so these two families are fighting over the baby and they're saying no it's our baby no it's our baby um, and the stark difference between the two families is that one is a very rich family and one is a very poor family and it's kind of about how the rich family have the ability to be able to do all of this research and try and find out who the baby belongs to and it's just a really intriguing story and it, the, the narrative begins um, with a man who has who was a private detective who was hired to kind of find out what happened to them and he um, is about to commit suicide because he just cannot work out what happened he is just stumped by it and he just doesn't know how he can live um, and yeah it's just it's just really good there's there's a lot of detail in the plot that I haven't gone into and it probably sounds a bit strange trying to explain it but it's just really really fantastic and I would highly highly recommend it so that's After the Crash by Michael Pussy and then the third and final book that I've actually read from this pile, I mean I've read so many crime thrillers this year, a lot of them have been meh, some of them have been okay, but these ones that I'm talking about here have been the best of the best. And then the ones that I've got to show you, these are books that I haven't yet read but have been raved about a lot. So the last one I actually read is The Book of You by Claire, Claire Kendall. And I read this in probably about February I think when I was on holiday in Exmoor. Um, and it's about a woman called Clarissa who is being stalked by her colleague Rafe. Um, he won't leave her alone, he won't take no for an answer, he's always lurking there. Um, and she gets selected for jury service, um, but the the jury service that she's, like the, the case that she's been assigned to has very p similar parallels to her own life, especially with Rafe and all this kind of stuff that's going on. Um, and kind of, she finds out that Rafe has probably got a bit more, he's kind of like, he's going to do something bad basically and she kind of finds out what that is and she's very frightened and it's a very good book again it's a kind of a claustrophobic book a lot of the crime thrillers are very claustrophobic um it's kind of a very dark tale about this woman and her struggle to kind of get away from this man that's kind of trying to get her and hurt her and whatever um that's a really bad description i'm so sorry but it's so hard to talk about these stories without giving too much away but it is kind of a story about a stalker and about what happens and how she kind of learns about what how un unhealthy this relationship with this man is so that is the book of you by claire kendall the next one i want to talk about is a book that i started reading um i don't know how far i got through how 
I got to page 28, so that's really appalling. But this has been raved about a lot, and it's called You by Carolyn Kepnes. And this, um, the tagline is, I want you, I need you. I can make you love me. You'll be sorry when you realise what you made me do. I love you to death. You, you, you. And the paperback cover is quite starkly, quite strikingly different to the hardback cover. Um, but it's about a woman called uh, Guinevere Beck, who strides into a bookstore where Joe works, and she is, he is instantly spitten. Um, Beck is everything Joe has ever wanted, tough, razor smart and sexy than his wildest dreams. He'd kill her, he'd kill to have her. Soon Beck can't resist her feelings for a guy who seems custom made for her. When a string of macabre incidents tears her world apart there is only one person she can turn to, but there's more to Joe than Beck realises and much more to Beck than her perfect facade. The obsessive relationship quickly spirals into a whirlwind of deadly consequences. A chilling account of unrelenting terrifying deceit, Caroline Kepnes' You is a thriller more perversely clever and dangerously twisted than any you have ever read. And it sounds amazing and what I did read of it was really really good I can't remember why I put it down I think maybe because I was reading another book or I can't quite remember why I put it down I wish I hadn't I really want to keep reading this so I'm going to definitely put this on my to read very very soon pile um it is in paperback like I said and there's an ebook as well so I'll leave all the links like I said before to all of these below so you can go and check them out and find out a bit more about them if you want to read them the next one I want to show you is a book again that I bought, I picked up and I never really actually got around to reading and it is called Her by Harriet Lane and it is supposed to look a bit funny, don't worry, your eyes haven't gone crazy. Um, and this is kind of an interesting premise. Um, two women, two different worlds. Emma is a struggling mother who has put everything on hold. Nina is sophisticated and independent and entirely in control. When the pair meet, Nina generously draws Emma into her life, but this isn't the first time the women's paths have crossed. Nina remembers Emma, and she remembers what Emma did. But what exactly does Nina want from her, and how far will she go in the pursuit of it? So that sounds pretty damn awesome. Um, it is in paperback as well, a bright neon uh, yellow paperback cover. Um, again, I, this is one that I did start reading, and again I just put it down because I just was doing something else. It's not because I did, wasn't enjoying it. Um, but this is actually... The hardback was published in 2014, but the paperback was published in 2015, so I guess it kind of counts as a thriller from this year if it's been published this year in paperback. So definitely one not to check out as well. Another one that I have heard a lot about, and again I'm so frustrated that I haven't got around to reading, um, is Housefrau by Jill Alexander Esbaum, I think that's how you say it. Um, and the prologue, for, or the, the prologue, the blurb for this one is, Anna was a good wife, mostly. Anna Benz lives in comfort and affluence with her husband and three young children in Dietlikon, a picture-perfect suburb of Zurich. Anna, an American expat, has chosen this life far from home, but despite its tranquility and order, inside she is falling apart. Feeling adrift and unable to connect with her husband or his family, with her fellow expatriates who try to befriend her, or even increasingly her own thoughts and emotions, Anna attempts to assert her agency in the only way that makes sense to her, by engaging in short-lived but intense sexual affairs. But adultery too has its immorality, and when Anna finds herself crossing a line, she will set off a terrible chain of events, ending in unspeakable tragedy. And her life, as her life crashes down around her, Anna must then discover where no one must go, when there is no going back. And I just love the sound of that. I love the cover. I think it's so beautiful, um, and the the back as well. Ooh, have you seen? It's so lovely as well. And again, this is another one that I picked up and started reading, and for some reason I put down. Um, but yeah, this is this has been pegged as being really really good as well so I'll leave a link to that one below sorry that I haven't read these ones it's really hard to kind of choose the ones that I've read because a lot of the ones that I have read have been ebooks and they're kind of some of them have been good some of them have been okay but these ones are the ones that I really want to get around to reading so I thought I'd show you these anyway to give you some kind of um inspiration if you want to pick up any of these or to kind of have a look at them Another one that I wanted to read and I haven't read that recently came out in paperback and has recently been chosen as the Loose Women Book Club pick for this month, which means I really want to read it, is The Liar's Chair by Rebecca Whitney. Now, the paperback cover is so much better than the hardback cover. I mean, I bought the hardback because I thought it was awesome, but I've seen the paperback one and the paperback one is so good. Um, and this one is, I started reading it again. This is when I started reading because I can remember what happened in the beginning. Um, Basically what happens is Rachel kills somebody, or well, Rachel is driving along the road and she knocks somebody over and she kind of, she, it's a hit and run, she leaves the scene and she gets away but then her and her husband, they destroy evidence of everything that happened because they're kind of, they don't want anything to happen to them but then she's wrapped with guilt and it kind of is a very exciting premise and um, it's set in Brighton. 
um, a stunning psychological portrait of a woman in a toxic marriage. Rebecca Whitney's debut will show you that sometimes the darkest shadows hold the truth you've been hiding from. So it sounds pretty damn good. Um, so that's a liar's chair. The next one I'm going to show you is probably, again, one you've probably heard of if you like crime thrillers, is the new Sophie Hannah novel called A Game for All the Family. I love the title. Again, this is another one that I picked up and started reading but didn't get around to finishing. How far did I get through? Here we go. I've got a train ticket in there. I've got to page 18. Amazing there. Um, this is about a woman called Justine who thought she knew who she was until an anonymous caller seemed to know better. After escaping London and a career that nearly destroyed her, Justine plans to spend her days doing as little as possible in her beautiful home in Devon. But soon after the move, her daughter Ellen starts withdrawal when her new best friend George is unfairly expelled from school. Justine begs her teacher to reconsider, only to be told that nobody's been expelled. There is and was no George. Then the anonymous calls start, a stranger making threats that suggest she and Justine share a traumatic past and a guilty secret. Yet Justine doesn't recognise her voice. When the caller starts to talk about three graves, two big and one small to fit a child, Justine fears for her family safety. If the police can't help, she'll have to eliminate the danger herself, but first she must work out who she's supposed to be. So yeah, sounds pretty damn epic, and the cover again is pretty cool, so definitely one worth checking out if you like crime thrillers. And then the final two are two books I picked up this year, again, that I haven't got round to reading but have been pegged as being good, that's why I picked them up and brought them, is because people have been kind of raving about them. The first one is The Life I Left Behind by Colette Macbeth. Colette has written some amazing books. The last one she wrote was called Precious Thing, I think. Um, let me see if I can find it. Precious Thing, yeah, that was incredible. And The Life I Left Behind was also incredible. No, hang on. This is The Life I Left Behind. What is the other one I've read by her? I'm sure I've read... I'm sure I've read two of her books. Maybe she's written one. She must have written one then. Precious Thing was amazing and The Life I Left Behind, I'm sure this is going to be amazing as well. Um, six years ago, Melody was left for dead. When the body of another woman, Eve, is discovered, Melody knows her attacker is still out there. The only way she can survive is to follow the clues that Eve left behind. So pretty excited to read that one. And again, this has had rave reviews. And there's even a quote on the front from Paula Hawkins, the author of Girl on the Train. So she must like this quite a lot. And um, the final one I bought is The Other Child by Lucy Atkins. This um, is... Sometimes a lie seems kinder than the truth, but what happens when that lie destroys everything you love? When Tess is sent to photograph Greg, a high-profile paediatric heart surgeon, she sees not she sh let me start again. She sees something troubled in his face and feels instantly drawn to him. Their relationship quickly deepens, but then Tess, single mother to nine-year-old Joe, falls pregnant, and Greg is offered the job of a lifetime back in his hometown of Boston. Before she knows it, Tess is married and relocating to the states, but life in the affluent American suburb proves anything but straightforward. Unsettling things keep happening in the large rented house. Joe is distressed, the next door neighbours are in crisis and Tess is sure someone is watching her. Greg's work is all consuming and as the baby birth looms he, he grows more and more unreachable. Something is very wrong. Tess knows it and she makes a jaw dropping discovery. So damn that sounds good. I cannot wait to read that one too. So that is kind of a collection of the crime thrillers I've got but I haven't read that have been recommended to me and I've been told are very good. Um, I hope that this video has been helpful in some way. Um, it's a little bit different to the one I made before. The one I made before I think I only did five but I wanted to talk through quite a few of the ones I've read um, and also give you some inspiration to kind of look at authors check out and to kind of look at different kind of different elements of thrillers because I think a lot of the time like I say a lot of them are like mummy thrillers about a child going missing or something but there's a lot of other ones out there that are worth reading so I hope that this video has been helpful and that you have got some kind of inspiration from some of the books I've shown you and uh, like I say I will leave links to all of the books in the description box below so you can go and check them out if you want to read some of them and yeah I hope you actually do manage to get around to reading some of them and you do enjoy them if you do so thanks for watching guys I hope you have a lovely day bye